Hello and welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic on nearly the last day of February. Normally this would be the last day of February, but we are in leap year territory and we're going to be looking at a puzzle called Pseudoscience today by the great Marty Sears, uh, a very colourful off offering with one of the longer rule sets that we're, we're sort of prepared to feature. Um, puzzles that have long rule sets we tend to shy away from, but this, this one apparently is so utterly brilliant that it needs to be seen. Um, it's got four stars out of five uh, on Logic Masters Germany, and we have had a whole host of, well, demands. I think that's probably the best way to describe it. You, this simply has to appear on the channel. Well, hopefully it will do if I can solve it. Um, and I'll read you the rules to this one in a moment or two's uh, time. I've got two or three things to mention today. The first is, I'm sorry for the late notice, but we are going to be streaming tonight at 10 o'clock UK time. More hex cells, and we'd love to have your company for that, obviously. I was sorry we didn't stream last week, but we just couldn't get the dates sorted out. But um, yeah, 10 o'clock UK time. I'll try and put a link on the screen, um, and we'd love to have your company. Uh, next thing is, we, well, we are closing in, obviously, on the end of February. Now, on the 1st of March, we have got loads of bumper bonus content um, uh, emerging uh, over on Patreon. We've got uh, we've got our new Sudoku hunt. That's the first thing. We've got the new competition running. We're going to be putting up my solve of region geometry, Emre Kalotoglu's masterpiece. Um, that's that's a three and a half hour video. And also, uh, I think it's safe, which because it will be Friday by then. I think it will be safe to release um, the crossword video. Uh, about uh, Dean Mayer's incredible uh, cryptic crossword that appeared last Sunday in the Sunday Times because the competition will basically have closed by then. Um, so lots of bonus content coming for you in the new month. Maverick's taken off, which is always, I, I view this as a propitious sign. Um, I sometimes have deer that wander into my back garden. And if I ever see deer in the morning, I always think, oh, it's going to be a good day now. I don't know why. When Maverick flies past, does that mean the same for Sudoku video? Uh, let's let's hope so. Um, so yeah, loads of stuff on, on Patreon. Actually, yesterday, I think, we also released um, a whole slug of videos, um, our solves of Rift Clowns uh, interactions, which is the February monthly reward. So if you were stuck on any of those puzzles, hopefully those videos will provide some enlightenment. Um, and the only other thing I've got to mention is quite a few birthdays. I don't know why. It's so strange, the sort of the frequency of birthdays. Some days we have none. Some days we have quite a few. So I'll trot through these. Happy birthday, Brandon, from your wife, Christine. Apparently you do most of the puzzles. Well done to you. Uh, and I hope you have chocolate cake today. Um, Bryony has turned 45, a secret age today. Uh, I know this because your husband, uh, is it Baltic? I hope I'm saying that wrong. It could be Baltic as well. I'm going to go for Baltic. Um, well, Baltic wrote to us. Uh, and uh, actually a fascinating email um, because you're turning 45 in the year 2024. And Baltic pointed out that 45 minus 1 multiplied by 45 plus 1 is indeed 2024. Um, and apparently 2024 is also a tetrahedral number. I didn't know what a tetrahedral number was, but it's sort of, you know, it's basically the sum of triangular numbers. So it, it would be the bottom layer of a pyramid, the number of sort of balls you'd have in that if, if you made your, your pyramid out of balls at each level. I don't know if that makes any sense. But anyway, 2024 is indeed a tetrahedral number. So I... I, I I did then wonder about the conversations that must go on in Bryony and Baltic's house, and I was quite jealous. So, Bryony, I hope you have a great day today with uh, a lot of chocolate cake. Um, next, Christine, from your dear friend Benny. Uh, I, th I think you went to university together, um, and it's your birthday today, and I know you see less of each other now because I think post-graduation, Christine moved to Munich. Um, but anyway, I wanted to wish, well, I wanted to wish Christine a happy birthday and your dear friend Benny also went, wanted to wish you a happy birthday, Christine. So many happy returns. And uh, next over there in Brooklyn, New York, um, Dan has turned 27 today. And I know this because your girlfriend, Sydney, wrote in and said that, uh, well, she'd like to wish you a happy birthday and also your cat. Now, is it Augie? Augie? 
I mean, that, that is a strange, that's a strange spelling uh, for, for a cat. Um, but Dan, happy birthday. I'm sure you'll be able to get some chocolate cake. I know there's some amazing chocolate cake over there in New York. Um, next, David. David, you've turned 30 today. And I know this because your best friend Larry wrote to us and told us that you're a huge follower of the channel. Well, thank you for being a huge follower. And I hope you have a great day today. Jackson, it's your birthday over there in Canada. Uh, I know this because your girlfriend Abigail wrote to us and I happen to know, I hope I'm not spoiling anything here, that uh, she has got you a Cracking the Cryptic mug for your birthday and chocolate cake. I mean, basically, that is the puzzle equivalent of being given a Ferrari. So happy birthday, Jackson. Um, next, Levi from your friend Wade. Um, no, no, it's not Levi. I've written the wrong thing. It's Lexi. I can't read my own writing. Lexi. Lexi from your friend Wade. Lexi, it's your birthday. I know you've been through a lot um, recently and um, you use the videos to fall asleep to. Um, this is a, a skill I never re Well, no, I did realize. <laughs> I can't claim I never realized I, I had it in real life. And no, I was fairly sure I had it. Mm, my track record of parties did suggest that I was, um, I may well have had that skill. But Lexi, I, I hope you're doing well and I remind you of the song uh, you'll never walk alone. Yeah, at the end of the storm, there's a golden sky, and I hope that golden sky is emerging for you. Um, and then Trisha, you've turned 42. Um, and I know this because your husband Jeff wrote to us. <laughs> and Je <laughs> Jeff is hoping that tonight's video will give you the Sudoku bug, because then then Jeff seemed to view that as, as as his present to you. Now, admittedly, getting the Sudoku bug is a great present. Um, and yeah, Trisha, I hope there are other presents that you're getting as well, but many happy returns, and I hope you have chocolate cake. And all that said and done, we shall move on to Pseudoscience by Marty Sears, and I will go through the long rule set. I think... Well, no, actually, no, it's just, it is just quite a long rule set. I was going to say all the rules are standard, but they're not. Um, anyway, this is what we've got to do. We've got normal Sudoku rule supplies. So the digits one to nine once each in every row, in every column, and in every three by three box. Um, in each row, column, and box, there is exactly one pseudo cell. The digits one to nine each appear, sorry, each appear once in a pseudo cell. So there's going to be one, one in a pseudo cell, one, two in a pseudo cell, etc. Um, the real value of a pseudo cell for the purposes of the colored lines is determined by multiplying its row number by its column number. E.g., if there is a pseudo cell in row six, column three, let's make that a pseudo cell, it has a value of 18, regardless of which digit appears in that cell. <laughs> <laughs> so that is quite crazy. Um, and then all of these lines are different, sort of have different rules attaching to them. So the green lines are German whisper lines, which means the values of adjacent cells on a green line have a difference of at least five. So if we ignore the existence of pseudo cells for a moment, if that was a one, this square would have to be at least a six because it needs to be at least five different from one. Um, that's how green lines work. Renban. The value of cells along a purple line, I've got a purple line up here and two little purple lines, uh, form a non-repeating consecutive set which can be arranged in any order. So if we worked out there was a one on this line, then we would know, ignoring pseudo cells, that this, this contained one, two, three, and four, and they could be in all sorts of orders like that would be one possibility. Um, Nabna, <laughs> the value of a cell on a yellow line, we've only got one yellow line, may not be consecutive with or the same as any other values on that line. So if we put a two on this line, we now could not put one or three on this line. Uh, and that's it. obviously I'm, everything I'm saying, I'm ignoring the, the pseudo cells. Um, Region sum, the values of cells within each 3x3 three three box along a darker blue line. Okay, we've got two of those by the looks of things. We've got that one and this great big one here. And the values of cells within each 3x3 three three box along a darker blue line sum to the same amount. Right, 
That's some, okay, I'm just going to spoil something about that other line, but I won't do that because uh, I can see something strange about the smiley shape one. But the um, this one, what that means is that those three digits add up to the same as those six digits add up to the same as those three. I'm just trying to pick a good colour. <laughs> those, um, those those three digits. But of course, pseudo cells could be involved. Um, which could certainly complicate matters considerably. Um, same difference. The values of a adjacent digits on a turquoise line always have the same difference. So I think that must be that coloured line. That looks a bit turquoisey. I'm not. I'm not the best with colour. Uh, we might have to make a colourblind version of this. I think because, I mean. I think that's turquoise. What's the last line? Different difference. Peach. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely more peach than this one. So I'm going to claim that this one is the same difference line. So the values of adjacent digits on a turquoise line always have the same difference. So if this was a 9, whoops, 9, 8, whoopsie, 7, 6, they would all have the same difference of 1. That seems okay, doesn't it? Probably. Um, and the different difference line, so we've got actually we've got two different difference lines, assuming that I have correctly identified the colour of peach. Um, the difference between the values of adjacent cells on a peach line must be different for every pair of adjacent cells on that line, e.g. If there are two cells with the values of 7 and 9 next to each other on the line, um, then cells with values 4 and 6 may not appear next to each other on the same line, as both pairs would have a difference of 2. OK, all right, I sort of understand that. It's a very peculiar and seemingly almost useless rule. <laughs> but <laughs> Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Uh, there were a few things I was noticing as I as I went through the all of those various lines there. I think I'm going to start with the smiley line because that's the most obvious thing that I could see. Um, one of these cells must be a pseudo cell, I think. And that's because... Um, basically this line in terms of values what we're saying is that that the value of this is the same as the value of those three is the same as the value of this so the values of these need to be the same but we can't obviously put the same sudoku digit in both of these cells without breaking the rules of sudoku so i think that means one of these cells is a pseudo cell so we'll make pseudo cells red but we don't know which one of these is a pseudo cell. At least I don't know. Um, although. Ah, no, I do know, don't I actually? Sorry. No, I do know. I'm just not used to this rule yet. Um, if this was a pseudo cell, it would have the value of six because it would be it's in row two, column three. And if this was the pseudo cell, it would have the value of 14. But if that had the value of 14, that one couldn't have the value of 14 because it couldn't be in a pseudo cell. So I think actually we're getting, there's a bit of a giveaway at the start. That has to be, well, it has, it has to have a value of six, but well that, no, this has to be a six then because it has the same value as this, but we, we haven't got a clue what this digit is. We just know it's not six. These squares, I was going to say they have to be a one, two, three, triple, but is that wrong given? It must be right. These must be more than row three column. Yeah, 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 yeah. None of these can be pseudo cells because this one would have a value of 12. It's in row three, column four, and 12 is more than six. And no, even with these strange rules, you can't create negative totals. Get no ideas about that, Marty. Um, so, so this is a one, two, three, triple. And that is that is interesting, look, because we're going to have to have a colour maybe for... Um, can we have a colour? I was thinking of using... I normally use light green, but... 
got so many sort of other colors in the grid I was wondering if it might be better to use something like that what works better against that oh that's horrible yeah okay let's just check that one as well yeah I think I am going to use gray I don't want to use light green against that one um, so what does that mean so these squares and these squares are now all normal these squares are all normal these squares include a naughty digit a pseudo digit yeah okay and we can get the value can't we of the pseudo digits it's either going to be row one column four which is four it's not that one <laughs> it's not this one because if it was this one its value would be five and one of the few things that i know about german whispers um in pseudo puzzles oh no hang on i don't hmm okay well if this was a pseudo five i still do know something which is that if this was five what values would we put into the cells either side of it? And the answer is nothing, because we're saying that this is made five by being a pseudo cell, so it could have any digit in it at all. We don't know what the digit would be. But these squares now, this would have a value of five, might not have the digit five in it, but it could have the digit five, couldn't it? The real value of a pseudo cell is determined by multi... Yeah, so I think, I think a pseudo cell could absolutely have the value that it is created as a result of it being a pseudo cell in in its value so that could actually just be a five but so let's imagine this was a five and it was a pseudo cell it has the value of five then these two squares have to have values that are five different from five and if we go down we get to zero if we go up we get to double digit numbers that doesn't work so that's definitely just not pseudo cell and if this is pseudo cell it's it's got values ah right so that's not a pseudo cell either because if this was a pseudo cell it would have the value of six and then this square which couldn't be a pseudo cell would have to have a value of one or lower and it can't have a value of one because of the line that's beautiful so actually we get another pseudo cell that square is therefore well <laughs> we don't know we get we know we get a nine there because we know whatever we put into this cell, it has the value of, of four. And the only digit that is five away from four is nine. So we get the nine. We, oh yes, okay. Uh, we, so we do get this, but we get it by hook or by crook, by Sudoku, because now if this is nine, this is a real cell a re so it has a real value equal to the digit we're going to put into the cell and it has to be at least five different from nine and it can't be one two or three so it has to be four and that means that has to go there by a process of sudoku so that cell no i thought for a moment it was going to have the value of the, the digit in it it doesn't uh, there's a six down here uh, these squares are uh, five seven and eight so the value of not the value the 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 sudoku number that we put in here is one two three four or nine okay and we can't duplicate values can we so or actually we don't get any additional that knowledge about this um now what do we do next the ren band looks like it has to be low numbers but that might be no that's fine that's absolutely fine we can't possibly <laughs> actually i might have been able to start here um but i didn't think about this there is uh, no possibility that either of these squares is a pseudo cell 
because that is row 3, column 7, and it would have the value of 21, which would require the remaining cells on this to all have enormous values in order to have consecutive values with 21. If it was this one, it would be 24, which is even more silly. So those two squares are both grey. That is a pseudo cell, um, which is in row. So that has a value of 27 on a right oh, that's interesting so that right so there must be a pseudo cell here now so what, what i'm seeing there is if that's a one two pair which is the least they could be the value of that stretch of digits is 30 because this is in row three column nine that has a value of 27. now that means those three squares have to add up to 30 at least now if they were seven eight nine and all normal that won't work um, in fact, we might be able to do better than that. Maybe this one. What's that? Row 4, column 5. So that has a value of 20, if it's pseudo. That has a value of 24, and that has a value of 30. So if that was 20... No. Okay, so if that's 20, you only have to make these add up to 10, if these are a 1, 2 pair. So that's actually very doable so that can be a pseudo cell um, now okay these are now not pseudo cells um, okay but the ren band now has four four normal digits on it that have to be consecutive and they don't include six. So these can't be, and none of these can be higher than six because obviously then, in fact, those two. Right, I see, okay. So these four digits here, we can see that, because they're all normal they're, they're, and they're all less than six, they are selected from one, two, three, four, and five. But look, these can't be one, two, or three. So they're four and five, which, ah, the misclicked and lost my army. Gosh, I feel like Terran uh, playing against any Zerg or Protoss. Uh, right, these squares now are not 4 and 5. These are from uh, 1, 2 and 3, but they have to form a consecutive sequence within 4 cells of 4 and 5. So this must be 4, 5, 2, 3. Um... I mean, that is 7, 8, or 9 now by Sudoku. These are 6, 7, 8, and 9. Uh, these digits are now 1, 1, 7, 8, and 9, aren't they? So that digit is not 7 or 8. So that's very, that's an extreme digit. These are not 9. And it doesn't really matter what we put in here, does it? Just so long as it's not six, which it can't be. Oh, this can't be a one, two pair anymore. So the minimum this can be is a one and a seven, which is eight added to, what was it, 27, 35 is now the minimum for these. Oh, sorry, and I didn't note, notate that one of those is is um, pseudoed. Hmm. What's what? What was the uh, peach line? Um, that was a different differences. So different differences. So but there's not many, there's not many adjacent cells. So all this is saying is this is not an arithmetic sequence because we're, we're looking at these two digits and they're going to have a difference. And then we're looking at those two dif digits and we're saying they have a difference and those differences cannot be the same number. So this can't go something like uh, 135. That would not work. But it could, it could be the digits 135 providing that they're not expressly arranged with the three here. So this, yeah, this is, this is uh, not a very constrained line. That was my first thought when I read the rules about the, um, the funny, the, the peach line. We've got 
two high digits. Oh, this is the yellow line, the Nabna line. Uh, value. Yeah, so we've got a Nabna line here. Which. Right, and that is interesting a bit. Because if that cell was uh, normal. So not oh, Maverick's doing another fly pass. If that, if that cell was normal and not uh, not a naughty digit, then this is a five cell Nabna, which means there can be no consecutive digits within the sequence. So they have to be one, three, five, seven, and nine. I mean that is about the most useful length Nabna line you can possibly generate. Um, but if that is pseudoed. No, okay, that's not pseudoed. Because if that was pseudoed, it would have the value of four. It's in row four, column one. And you can't you can't select from from the if you imagine the digits one to nine laid out in front of you, and you say, okay, you have to have I'm gonna give you five values to pick, but they have to be from that set of digits. Well you can't pick four as one of the digits. It it will not work. Um because I don't know, I can, I can just see that visually, like one, three, five, seven, and nine. We have to keep the numbers apart. If we have four as one of the numbers, I mean, let, let's, let's, let's prove it slowly to ourselves. I mean, it, it cannot work um, because now we can't include uh, either three or five. So we can only have one of one and two. So we can have a one or a two, but not both. So let's put a two in. And now we've got to select three digits from six, seven, eight, and nine, and, and any two of those are going to be too close. So that, that, that I mean, that's the long-winded proof of something that feels intuitively obvious. So, so this is also not pseudoed, which means this is the digits. Right. So that's a five, in fact, because this these are the digits one, three, five, seven, and nine. And those can't be five or seven, actually. I didn't see that immediately, but that can't we can't put five here either. So that is five. These can't be one or three. So they are seven and nine, which means these are one and three. Yeah, and that gives me that digit by Sudoku, that digit by Sudoku. Here we go. And that's an eight, right? So that's an eight, which means that, oh, that couldn't be an eight. In fact, that's a, that's a four by the looks of things. So we've got lots of even numbers in our pseudo thingy thing. Pseudo thingy thing being the technical term for what's going on here. This square is now a six by Sudoku. So these squares are two, five, and eight. Right, okay, but we actually get that digit, don't we? Because that can't be five, and we've just we've just worked out this couldn't be an arithmetic sequence. So if we put five in the middle of a two and an eight, it doesn't matter what the order is. You put the two and the eight in, you'll you'll have pairs that differ by three. So that can't work. So so this is five. I really like this. I really do like this. What I like most of all is how surprising it is, how smooth the solve path is, because it's such a long rule set. And it feels that, well, I thought it was going to be, I, th I thought the start would be monstrous to find where to start, and it wasn't at all. It was the first thing I looked at. Um, and then you can sort of just carry on. So what can we say about this line now? What is this line? That's the first thing we've got to establish. This is the same difference line. Ah. So, well, oh, but it can just be seven, eight, nine. Oh no, it can't be, it can't be that. I was thinking it could just be that, but it can't be that because that would put seven, nine in the column with that seven, nine. So it's not that, but this could have pseudo cells on it, um, probably. What's that? If that's a pseudo cell, that is an eight by dint of being pseudoed. So it would go six, eight, and then, oh, and then it could go six, six, eight, six. And if that's pseudoed, we could actually put eight or four here and that would work. 
So that could be pseudoed. If that's pseudoed, its value is 5. Mm, that feels wrong. No, there, there is no way that the, this this cell must have the same. It must have the same parity as this, mustn't it? Yeah, I mean it must do that. That's because whatever this digit is, in in traversing the world from this digit to this digit, we're either we're either adding this twice or subtracting it twice or adding and subtracting it to get the same. So. If, even if it's an odd difference, the odd difference is cancelled out by being repeated. So the parity of this, uh, it, well, that so this is not pseudoed, is, is what we're saying, because it can't be different parity to this. And it is 2, 4, 6, or 8. Hmm. Um, although eight, eight feels difficult to me. Because wouldn't that have to be, wouldn't that have to be seven to do that? And then that would have to be nine. I'm very skeptical about whether this can be eight. I don't think it can. If it's four, see, how would you get four as well? Wouldn't that have to be five? I don't see how it. I don't see how you could possibly, you could possibly do that. Now this two is more difficult, isn't it? Because couldn't you go six four two? Well then you'd go back to four again. Ah, unless this was pseudoed. Hang on, I haven't thought about pseudoage. Um, so how do we do pseudoage for this cell? This is row five, column two. This is a value of ten if it's pseudoed. Um, that feels difficult. No, no, that could be pseudoed. If that was pseudoed with value 10 and this went 6, 2, 6, 10, everything has a difference of 4 on the line. That's possible. Um, yeah, but if this is not pseudoed, I think I'm having difficulty working out how this is ever two. I suspect this has to always be six. If that is, if that is two, what do I put in here? I can't put four in because six four two gives me no option for this square. I'd have to, it can't be zero, so it has to go back up to four, which has already appeared. I'm just I'm worried that I'm missing. Oh, yeah, hang on, hang on. What was it? That was going to be 8 if it was pseudoed. If that's 8. Now, if that's 8, that's still 6. It can never be 2. I, ca I can't see a way that that can be 2. I really can't. I mean, I'm slightly hesitant to put it in. What am I going to get if I, if I say that's 6? I get a 6 down here by Sudoku. I'm just nervous that there's the some I just have the spider sense that there is some reason there is some way I could either with pseudo digits or not create an uh, you know it's create some strange pattern in these three squares that I'm not thinking of um what about can we do anything with the fact that we've used most of the even digits in the pseudo cells. Don't know. <laughs> um, can we? I don't know what to do. I'm sorry. I can do some some more Sudoku. Get rid of eights up there. So I, I, I nearly know the value of these lines down here, don't I? Because this is, what was this, 27 plus 9 is 36. 
plus either one or seven. So this is so this line either adds up to thirty seven or forty three. which almost makes that one impossible. That's rotten. I thought that was, I could have ruled that one out because that one is row four, column five and is worth 20. So you'd need at least 17 in these, but you can do it if that's an eight, nine pair. So that could still be it. Um, and we don't know, do we, whether one of these is pseudoed. So if that was pseudoed, what's that going to be? Row 4, column 7 is a 28. So we'd have 28 plus at least, well, these would be a minimum of 15 more if they were 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 which is 43, which is, that's, isn't that the number we first thought of? So that seems, that seems quite good, actually. That would make that one have to be a, uh, a thingy, a pseudo cell. That's row six, column eight. So that would have value 48 on, on a peach line, which is a different differences line. Uh, well, <laughs> that's so stupid. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's, that's not going to be where we get joy, I'm afraid. Um, hmm. Okay, can't I claim? And this might be wrong. I can claim. No, that's fine. That is row six, column two. So if that was a pseudo cell, it would have value 12, and this would have to be an 11 or 13. That is not right, so that's grey. We weren't, I wasn't sure about these two, was I? If that was pseudo cell, we just get nothing. I haven't thought about this whisper, but that's because the whisper is terrifying with the prospect of pseudo cellage. Ah, hang on though, that one, look, I haven't done some shading down there. So that is quite interesting. Now, all of a sudden, this ring, this sort of acorn shape in the grid, um, that is going to have to have some degree of normal oscillation on it. What do I mean by normal oscillation? Well, along green lines, if we ignore the existence of pseudo cells for a moment, a green line, because the digits have to differ by five each time, and, and we couldn't put five on the line, ignoring pseudo cells, then each cell on the line either has the quality of being beneath five or above five. Well, imagine this was beneath five. Could this also be beneath five? No, because the most, the furthest apart these could be would be four and one, which are only three apart, not five apart. So what that means is if, if this was low, this has to be high and this has to be high, etc. And you get this oscillation along the line. Um, so, Ah, this is an odd length line. Hang on. Oh dear, oh dear. Right, sorry, I didn't notice this. Um, this is a... There, there is definitely a pseudo cell on this acorn. At least one. Because uh, it can't... Imagine this... Imagine these were both not pseudo celled for a moment. And think about what we just said about how each um, how each pair basically has to include a low and a high digit. So let's let's alternate the line and shade it in. And look what's happening here. These would all be of the same polarity, as would this one. And that's put two of the same polarity next to each other. Though these couldn't be five apart. So what that means is that there is, there's got to be an interruption. Now that might not be, because what do we need from an interruption here? 
we need we need something that changes the polarity of the line Th this I'm just wondering whether that does change the polarity of the line I mean it has the value it's row 5 comma 2 so it has the value of 10 these two would then be normal and have to be at least 5 different from 10 but they can't be 5 because you can't well actually they can't be 5 for more than one reason so they both be 1, 2, 3's and 4's but now the polarity of the line hasn't changed you, this has appeared on the line but it hasn't changed the polarity it's, it's still the polarity is, is surviving and it's still going to break these two are both going to be low unless this is definitely uh, a polarity breaker so in fact this is that's a beautiful that's so beautiful so it's it's the particular position that Marty has put the acorn in such that this cell doesn't get large enough to be allow to allow the polarity of the line to be fixed so that has to be um, it has to bend the polarity if you like and look we're going to get loads more loads more thingy thing loads more gray as a result of that this square well this square we already know has a value of 20 right so so that's going to give us that digit in the corner because we worked out before that the maximum we could get these three cells to add up to in terms of their value was if we put eight nine in here where we could just eke out enough to get 37 so that's a one that's a seven let's just double check that we've got ignore the eight we've got row three column nine 27 36 37 right this we haven't got a clue what this is um but we do know that it's got a value of 20 which means that and the point here is that these squares now can can have opposite polarity i can have a one two three or four here and a six seven eight or nine well i can't i can only have uh well ignore the eight nine but i i, I can the line these don't have to oscillate polarity these cells because this is so enormous on the line so that is the trick i'm sure he says as he tries to work out exactly what that means though right uh, ah, 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 ah right but let's now return to this box ah oh, this is so good marty it's, it's so it's all so smooth because what we worked out before is that i could keep this down to th to 43 if i had a, a naughty cell on it if I had one, two, three, four, five, and a naughty cell. Well, now we're not heading to 43. We're only heading to 37. The minimum is going to be generated by that one, which is row five, column seven, 35. Yeah, that's, it's, it's, it's clearly impossible. You can't make all those other digits only add up to two. So these, these are all gray. That is, that is the strange thingy. Uh, that one is, that has a value of row six column eight so it's 48 <laughs> i don't think i've understood the different differences line hang on the difference between the values of adjacent cells must be different i mean what is this possibly doing here because that's a natural number so it's going to have a difference of something like 40 between those two numbers. And in fact, look, I mean, these two can't even be non-natural numbers. So, oh, I see what it's doing. Well, the only point, the only point reason I can see that this, this, this exists is it's going to stop that digit from being the same as that digit. Because if these were both the same digit, then this peach line thing would would break its rules so right that's what that's doing i couldn't understand why on earth you do this um right but now we can um ah uh, <laughs> I'm going to share a secret with you. This, this is a secret very re relevant for Bryony today. Um, because Bryony will be able to tell us, given her birthday age, 
uh, exactly what this box of digits adds up to if we ignore pseudonis. And that's going to be important because any complete box of a Sudoku, it's a secret I only share with my favourite people, um, any complete box of a Sudoku, because it contains the digits 1 to 9, sums to 45. Now, what does this line add up to? Well, that la line is full of natural numbers now and sums to 37, which means the natural value of these three digits, ignore the pseudo cell, must be the difference between 45 and 37, which is 8. Now, I know that if you're adding three different Sudoku numbers to 8, you're always needing a 1, so that must go there. These two have to add up to 7, and they must be a 3-4 pair. Uh, okay, that's, ah, that's, the other thing that's done is that, look. So I do have two, I do have two pseudo digits on, oh, that's right. The point of that is it gives us the polarity of the line because now um, this, the value of this is 10 because it's row five, column two. These two have to be at least five different from 10 using natural numbers. So, so they, these have to be from 1, 2, 3, and 4, which means that one is low. That's 1, 2, 3, and 4. That one is low, 1, 2, 3, or 4. This is high, 7, 8, or 9. It can't be 6. In fact, it's not 8 or 9. That's 7. Um, that's 6, in fact. <laughs> this is so good. This is monogamous as well. Because this digit is high by polarity. It's got to be a 5 different from 1, 2, 3, and 4. And it's a natural number. So it's six, can't be seven, eight or nine. And six is, can only go next to one on a German whisper line. So now this has to be a two because it's got to be consecutive with this and it's not a naughty number. This is a three by Sudoku. That's a one, that's a two. Oh, good grief. This this is just absolutely wonderful. I, I'm, I'm not surprised because it's Marty and Marty is a genius of a setter. But I am surprised at how good this is, given given the shapes of the lines. It just it was more the look of the puzzle that made me think that it was um, it was going to be a bit different to solve than this. Ah, now that can't be four because we've already had four in a thingy cell, so that's four. This can't be three or four because it's got to be at least five different from seven. That can't be two. Um, can we do any better than that? Yeah, there's a five here. So that's three, that's five, that's seven. Okay, that's not one look because of this digit. That is on a whisper. Oh, but this is a value of 10, so that's absolutely fine. This square has to be at least eight. That's got to be eight or nine, because it's got to be at least five different from three or four. Um, that gives me a three, four pair in this row. So these digits now are sevens, eights, and nines by Sudoku. That's not seven. Um, okay, but that has a value of 10. Yeah. That has a value of 10 on, on, the, on, the, on the turquoise line. So if this was 2, the difference on the line would be 8, and 6 would have no, no possible fill. This, this, we'd need the difference of 8 from 6, and that does, doesn't exist. So that, that is 6, which is one of the things I was worried about before. And now this can be anything. Oh, but, but this is 10. <laughs> so no, it's, it's a difference of 4 on the line. And that can't also be 10. So that is 2. This is 1. That's 4. That's 3. That's 4. That's 9 now, which is the only natural digit 5 away from 4. So this is 7 or 8. This is a Renban line. And that can't be 5. That's got to be 3. And this is seven, eight, or nine, but it's not eight because we've already had that in the pseudo cellage. So this is seven or nine. And there is definitely an eight in the box in one of those squares, which tells me that that digit is a nine. Which is 
potentially interesting. Okay, so what do we get now? Three, four, five, six, six, eight, nine into these squares. The six in the row has to go there. The eight goes there. That's eight. That's nine. These squares are two, five, and seven. That's going to be useful because that's going to give me that digit now. That's now a nine. That's not seven. That's not two. And we've got loads and loads of stuff done here. That's a two in the corner, no song, but still very welcome. One, three, that's a nine, that's a seven. So this column's probably where we look. We've got two, two, seven and eight to place down there. An absolute dearth of cluage in these boxes, look. So we are, we are gonna need a lot of help from the top of the grid here. Two, three and six into those squares a uh, one oh one of these is a uh a naughty cell isn't it so it's the two actually because we've already had the naughty three and the naughty six so the the two down here is a naughty digit um hmm. Okay, I can't quite see. Those are, those are natural digits because they have a naughty digit in the column. So these digits on the left hand side are from 1, 3, 4, 7 and 8. 1, 3, 4. So there's a naughty 7 down here, which is just beautiful. Look at that. So because, because there needs to be a naughty digit in this box in these cells and the only digits that, that, that has not already been naughty is seven we can we can do the eight and the seven and now we get a two eight pair down here so these this column needs one three five and six and that's not one Oh, I think I'm going to go full pencil mark here, actually. One, three, four, and seven. That's not one. So I've got a naughty seven here. I've got a naughty two here. So the naughty digit here is the other digit five, I want to say. Is that right? One, two, three, four. Five is missing. Six, seven, eight, nine. Right, so there is a five down here. That does that digit, so that's two. No, oh, nearly. Oh, well, the five does that as well. So that's five, that's four, that's five, that's seven. Beautiful, and that's how this is all gonna resolve down at the bottom. So now we've got uh, two, four, and eight here. We've got, oh, six, seven, and nine here. Um, and these squares are one, one, three, and five. Right, and this is what we were looking for earlier, weren't we? Because we know that this square cannot be a three. Uh, no, that is right. I was wondering if that was changed by the pseudo possibility, but it's not. Because if that was a three, because we know the five in this column is pseudoed, it would be a natural three. And that's a natural three. So even though this has a ludicrous value, the difference between this, this and the ludicrous value and this and the ludicrous value would be the same. So that is not a three. That is a one or a five. Oh, and it's a f oh, oh, hang on. It is a five. Sorry. It is a five. That's the naughty digit. Um, so this one now is red, which means these are gray. These are gray. And this and this now so this can't be two because we know the two is the naughty digit and this can't be seven yeah look now this five is doing this digit so now i've got a three six pair that gives me a four here which means that these are not four anymore i've got this three six pair right that's not four this is not six or nine, so that becomes seven. This square is eight, can't be a two by Sudoku. That gets me this digit. 
and we're nearly done we just got to that eight gives me this digit that's a five these squares are oh i thought I made a mistake then i couldn't see the two in this column but it is definitely there um right what do i need four and seven into these squares which is not resolved and these squares have got to be five and nine uh, that's going to probably be resolved over here once we figure out how this line finishes at the bottom. Let's just pause though and make sure that we've we've done as much as we can. Can't see how to do much. I'm feeling we can do this, but I can't see how to do it. Mm, not sure right so what have we got on this line then and this line must not have it mustn't have any same differences and currently the difference here is 48 45 is the difference between these two squares six times eight which is 48 minus three so 45, so that's a secret. There's a secret difference between these two squares. Now this one is 48. Now what is that one? That's 49, it's a difference of one. Right. So that's a difference of one. So this can't be an eight, nine pair look. So, Uh, okay, because if it was an A9 pair, it would have the same difference as the as the 49 and 48 would on the line. Um, and what's the difference between these two? So, what, what did we say? That was 49. So if that was 4, that is ridiculous. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. So actually, this can't be four. Because if that's four, the difference between these is 45, and the difference between these is four. That's so stupid. That's magnificent, actually. That is absolutely ridiculous. Marty, that's brought tears to my eyes. That's, that's comical. That is absolutely comical. So I don't know if if you're seeing this. This sort of wishbone-shaped uh, peach thing here is it's magnificent because you actually have to consider the fact that these differ in value by forty-five, and these could differ in value by forty-five <laughs> because that has a value of forty-nine, and that could be a four. So that has to be an eight. That has to be a four. That's a four, and that's a seven. Now that that's big. Because that seven is pushing a seven there by Sudoku. And we know seven was the uh, the pseudo digit, so that's going to be the two now. In um, I was just doing some work. Look, two and eight go in. This digit is now not seven. That's for sure. So we get a one three pair in this row. So that digit is five or six. That digit is not two. Um. That digit is grey as a result of everything. And has this done anything very useful? I really hope so. This would be bad now if I still can't do it. Oh, I know what to do. So because this is 8, that can't be 9. Because that would have a difference of 1. And though these two had a difference of 1 between the 49 and the 48. Oh, so it still does work, this line. 6 and 9. 9 and 5. 6 goes here. 3, 6, three three one no three in the corner therefore um and that square is a five what a puzzle that is that is such a yes that is such a beautiful finish do i like it i love it that the finish to that is i mean that's as good as you will do as a good a finish as you will ever find in a sudoku i mean it's i mean the selection of the of the way that line worked I don't can you can you set a puzzle like this backwards I don't know but it's almost like this must have been done backwards because to finish like this 
is I mean it's just Serrano de Bergerac esque, isn't it? It's it's Mon Panache. It, it is <laughs> people people might think that Sudoku puzzles cannot demonstrate panache, but this does. That I defy anybody to say that that is not just a a moment of sheer panache from Marty Sears. I love it. Let me know in the comments how you got on. We're going to tick over the hour. Uh, I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later. And some streaming, don't forget as well, uh, with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.